Hi, Nithya. Good morning. Hi, Karthi. Good evening. Hope everything is going good with you. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, let's get started for today. So today we are going to learn some important concepts today. So today we are in day 47, where we are going to learn about um, some of the functional interfaces called predicate function. And there's a concept we are going to learn about function chaining. I hope you might uh, get a chance to see this assignment before this today's class so that you will know what, we, what I'm talking about today. So this particular video, this particular class uh, uh, is going to tell what are the predefined function interface already available in Java. And we are going to see today in detail about each one by one. And tomorrow we are going to see a couple of more so that like we will see complete all the predefined predefined function interfaces within Java 1.8. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the plan for today. This is the agenda for today, where we are going to learn about predicate. We are going to see what is predicate, where we can use predicate, and what is the advantage we are going to get out of it, and how to use predicate. We are going to see function. Okay, where are we going to use it, how to use it, and what are advantage. And there is a concept called function chaining. We are going to learn about it. Okay, so before we get into this, so let me start from the basic, right? So we know that in Java 1.8, Lambda and function interface are Lambda and function interface works together. Is it yes or no? Yes. The reason is that the reason is that wherever you have a function interface that a class which implements the function interface that implementation logic you can write with the help of lambda expression right can i say that way so when i say that let's say you have an interface here let's say you have an interface called interface let's say you have an interface called a and then you have a class called class my class and whenever you try to implement this interface let's say you say like implements interface a isn't it and let's say right now everything is fine but if you have a method here let's say you have a method here called let's say within this interface you have a method called one upshot method i can say y let's say y empty one off right so is it a function interface or not yes because this interface contains exactly one upshot method right so then i can call this as function interface isn't it wherever we have a function interface and if any class implements that function interface definitely what you do here you will be implementing it isn't it what you do here you will say that you know public void empty one off where you will write your own logic isn't it that is how you have to write your logic right so instead of doing here instead of doing your logic here instead of doing your logic here this particular piece of code can be written with help of lambda expression because you don't need method name you don't need return type you don't need Access specifier, you simply need is you have to simply capture this portion of piece of code and you convert this into a lambda expression with the help of lambda keyword, lambda symbol. That's all. Right? This is how I can say that lambda and function interface works together. You cannot write a lambda expression without having a function interface. In short, I can say lambda is an expression that you can do wherever you have a function interface implementation. You can use lambda or lambda is used in a place where the implementation logic can be defined or written in this other way of style of writing that's all right and function interface is used to store it or it is used to handle it right so here what you do here whenever you when you convert this into a lambda logic what you will do interface a let's say a is equal to you will write this logic isn't it 
say this one you have to write a lambda expression and then whatever you do here isn't it this is how you have to do right so here you will write the same logic instead of writing in your actual class whatever the logic you are trying to write it here you will use it here you will write it here that's all isn't it and don't forget to put semicolon right so this is how we have seen lambda and function interface now if you see here i have created one interface i have created my class and then i convert that implementation into lambda so in this case even i don't need this class isn't it there is no requirement for this class at all if i have the function interface i can simply write this logic right this is required this is required oh, this is not required isn't it because i'm converting i don't need this class at all implementation class is not required i can simply convert that into a implementation logic here itself with the help of lambda right so here i created one lambda i created that uh, expression based out of what i interface i created the function interface and then i have a implementation class but java oracle developers right when they created this uh, java 1.8 when they are adding a feature to 1.8 whenever they uh, propose this plan of uh, you know implementing this way of doing it right so they thought like okay there are some interfaces which they can create and they can give us to give it to us in some packages so that it will be beneficial for us so the package is nothing but java.util.function package okay so we'll see in detail but what does the package contains some of the utilities which are which are related to function interface those interfaces we are calling it as pre defined functional interfaces what is it called pre defined function interfaces which means oracle team created an interface like this for us wherein we can able to use it and also what type of logic you can use also we know what type of method is that we know so these are all called fun predefined function interface and one of the predefined function interface is called predicate is called predicate which is what we are going to see today now in this particular class uh in general when you say predicate what does it mean you are trying to predicate him or your predicate is not correct right which means like you are trying to judge some right so let's say you are dealing with some data right so whenever you deal with some data let's say you are having one record where it has some values in it and you want to check some condition over it you want to check the data based on some condition then you can now easily or happily go for predicate predicate is nothing but like kind of trusting or checking someone or validating something okay so whenever i say data validation you can go for this so let me go to the slide and i will show you what i'm talking about yeah so predicate is an interface i think but a function interface in java which means wherever you have a condition checks are required whenever you want to apply some condition to a particular uh or data and you want to check that definitely or happily you can go for predicate interface example i am taking the example let's say check the given number is odd or even if uh, someone says okay uh hey kartik i want to you to write a program to check whether the given number is odd number or even number in typical way what i do i will take the record then i will write a function within the function or method i will write it logic saying i will do that modular division right and then i will check if the value is equal to equal to zero isn't it that is how you usually do and where i have to do if and else and all but instead of doing that that way what you can do here assume that you have a interface called not assume there is a interface called predicate in java by default or oracle develops already created interface called predicate within that there is a method called test okay and it returns boolean value okay so what happens here if you relate with exactly with what we did here here what you do a dot mt1 right or a a dot this mt1 only then it will be executed right similarly here they created a method called test okay so since this predicate interface contains only one abstract method we can call that predicate interface as function interface right now since we have predicate sorry since we have function interface then that implementation can be used can be written in with the help of lambda expression that is where we can write this but who is going to hold this lambda the function interface right is nothing but predicate of p predicate p is equal to if i pass the value i then you think about this one right so you take this as an example right so if you pass the value i then i modulation 2 equal to equal to 0 then you have to say p dot test 
of pass the value 10 see whatever you passing it here that will be passed to this value i and that will be checked against this i modular 2 equal to equal to 0 if this condition is true it is always going to give true isn't it if the condition is false it is going to give false it's not only for integer it can you, you can do it for uh, string as well let's say i am giving some string and i want to check whether the length of the string is let's say 10 or 5 or something whatever it is right you want to check uh, whether the particular string has the particular length or not you can do it right the way he is you guys see here like integer and string it is all about what type of data data type which i am passing it input okay so let me start with the writing a program uh, from the scratch so that you will understand from the scratch so let me start by creating a class called predicate demo all right predicate demo so here i am trying to say that i don't need to write an interface i don't need to write a class implementation for that simply i can use the predefined function interface right then when i say predefined function interface nothing but predicate predicate is a function interface in java if i go and check it over okay this is not a right predicate we have to import yeah we have to import okay i will do one thing we have to import the package let me do this one predicate p is equal to okay so what i should do here if i pass the value i let's assume that i am checking whether i modular division 2 equal to equal to 0 or not that's all now let me see yeah now you see here predicate is available in java.util function as well as it is somewhere in the sql.row set now we are going to use it only java.util function so java.util function is a package within that you have a interface called predicate now if i go here Yeah, I open here. You guys see here. Since JDK 1.8, you have this interface called predicate, which is nothing but a function interface, right? At the rate of function interface, and there is one method called boolean test of t, which accepts it a value. So we are doing exactly here, right? You are accepting this one, and then you are checking this condition. If uh, let's say i equal to i mod division equal to equal to zero or not, you're getting it i modular division i modular division 2 equal to equal to 0 or not here i can say that since i am passing integer i can say that integer all right now what should i do i have to call that method right p dot what is the method i should call test so here i have to pass the value let's say if i pass the value 10 what is the output we are going to get we pass the value 10 what is the value i'm going to get p dot test p dot test of 10 so which means 10 has been passed over here the i then 10 modular 2 equal to equal to 0 true or false true right which is nothing but even number right so since i don't see output here because the reason is that i'm going to put this in the sysout so i simply say sysout then I can copy this one, put it over here. Now let me run it. See, I'm getting true, which means the value which you pass 10 is checked in this method. Now let's say if I pass it as 11. So ideally it has to give false because 11 is not an integer, sorry, even number, right? It is a hard number. So this is how you have to use predicate function. Basically you are checking the value whenever you have a condition or a requirement to check some value then you can always go for predicate so from the uh, class and method itself you can be able to understand so predicate is nothing but you are trying to check something and the method name also called test you are testing something right the value you are testing let's assume that you are having another predicate okay so here i am passing string value okay 
let's say I'm saying P1 is equal to here I'm saying that let's say if I'm uh, passing yes value and I want to check whether that yes dot length right yes dot length is greater than let's say 3 or not okay how can I test it P1 dot I have to call the test method within that I have to pass the string which I want to test it in this case I have to say let's say red says tech all right now I let me see so here I have to put it in this result statement because it is giving a boolean value it is giving me the boolean value I have to simply write it here instead of the sysout okay let me go and run this program yeah it is giving true the reason is that red says text length is greater than 3 let's assume that let's say I put it as exactly red okay let me see see it is false because it has 3 but we are checking greater than 3 if I do that s dot add length is greater than or equal to 3 it has should give true right let me see yeah it is giving true so this is how whenever you want to do some validation or testing something on a particular data then you can happily go for predicate wherein you don't need to write the if else logic and you have to put a different uh, mechanism over there okay you can simply or happily go for using predicate function interface which is already defined by oracle team that is the reason we call it as predefined function interface called predicate is it clear Nithya? okay yeah yes graphic now let's move on to the next one there is another uh, interface introduced by java which is called function okay so here function is another uh, predefined function interface so the reason why they have introduced this one is nothing but whenever you want to perform some operation right to a particular data then you can happily go for functional interface called function okay so wherever you want to perform some operation on the given data and expects an output so you are giving some input and you want to apply some logic over there and you are expecting an output then you can happily go for function this is what uh, regular way of doing it right like whenever you create a class and methods what you typically do you give some input and you perform some operation on it and then you expect an output isn't it so that is the reason they created like interface called function okay so here you have an input you want to apply some performance operations and then you expect an output so example let's say you want to add 100 to a given number let's say you give any number but i want to add 100 to it which means you are giving any number is nothing but input and adding a hundred to that number is nothing but a performing operation and what you're expecting output is nothing but whatever you give plus hundred isn't it so in that case you have to go for function one of the example i'm telling so let me go and write the program for function demo i'm going to get a class called function demo okay function demo inside the main class right i'm going to make it as a main class okay so here whenever i want to apply some logic to the given input then i can happily go for function in the previous one predicate you are not applying a logic to it you are checking the data whenever you want to check the input data then you can happily go for predicate whenever you want to apply some logic to the given data and you expect this output based on the perform operations right then you can go for function so when i say function which is nothing but f function check here also you have to give the input parameters let's say i can say f is equal to so if i give the value i then what i'm expecting i plus 100 that's all isn't it then i have to say f dot apply because you are applying some operations right so what operation i'm giving let's say i'm giving 200 so since i'm giving 200 which means i'm trying to give some integer value integer means i have to call it as integer here i need to pass it as integer let me let me first import this one let me try to import this one yeah this is a function interface right let me yeah now it got imported so function integer f is equal to i if i pass the value i i plus 100 you see here it is throwing error the reason is that you are giving some input at the same time you have to receive the output 
what is output you are receiving integer right so then you have to pass two parameters one is what data type is it the input what data type is the output so here you are passing input as what 200 right so which means here uh, integer and output is also 200 plus 100 300 right so let me go and run the program you see here it doesn't print it because you have to put it in the sysout statement because you want to print the output right let me run this program now yeah you see here 300 let's say instead of apply of 100 200 let's say if i say 500 then ideally it should give 600 as an answer isn't it yeah see 600 so this is how actually the function works function means you are giving some input and you want to perform some operation after that operation applied to that particular function then that particular data will be replayed back or get back so this is a typical way of doing it it's not only integer you can also here also you can go for string or even the objects okay let me go by an example called object okay let's say i have a class called employee okay simple just think about simple class called employee even i can say 111 something like that okay so let's say i have a string employee name and then i can create a custom defined constructor right how can i do go to source generate constructor using the fields and then generate okay now you see here whenever i call like object of uh, employee 111 with some value it will be assigned here isn't it so this is fine let's say if i want to uh, assign some you know um, checking this value whether it is contains or not then i can happily go for it so what i should do here is first of all i want to create some list of employee objects right so what i can do here is i am trying to say i want to create an array of array of array of let's say emp list is equal to this array of objects okay how can I create it? New employee of. I have to simply pass employee name. Let's say I'm uh, my name it as Karthik. Okay. And then I would say another employee object of. Let's say within double quotes, I can say J. Okay. And then I can have another employee object. It's not necessary like you have to do the same way but it's just for easy understanding i'm just creating some three different objects and i want to put it in the oops, i want to put it in the array okay let's say i have three objects and it is in this list right array list array so how can i iterate it you guys know how to iterate array for the for loops how you can do it this one Right. This is the list of type what employee one 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 right and let's say I would say as e then colon right so it means that you are taking this list of type this one of record is each record is this one e it will be assigned to the variable e now you want to check let's say you want to check if uh, the particular uh, employee object the employee name is starts with let's say k or j or let's say m like that if it is like that you have to get back the value okay so what typically you can do here without like, using lambda if you want to do it so every time when the for loop runs you are going to check right if e dot employee name dot equals or you can say start with starts with let's say you want to check with uh, k right then you have to say that you know sys out yes it started with k else you have to say that sys out not started with k isn't it this is how you have to write the logic right so let me go and run the program you see here yes it started with k which is because of first object is karthik and second object is j so it uh, not started with k 
and third one is santosh so not sure okay so this is makes sense right so this is very simple program so here you see here just i have one employee class and for that i create an object and each object i am having one value called say employee name and i'm checking whether that employee name starts with the keyword k or not now if i want to convert this into a uh, traditional way of doing it let's say uh, let, let's say if i want to convert this traditional way of doing with a uh, lambda expression what i can do here see what i did here i'm making some operation and then i'm returning back isn't it so what i can do here is that i can create a function function let's say i would say this lambda okay here i can say function what is the input parameter i am passing what data type it is i am passing the value of what employee class right because that is the object i am passing because i want to check that and what is the return type i am getting it or i can simply say here i can simply say here string something called data and here i would say data is equal to started with k and here data is not started with k not started with k okay so this is how i want to do it so here i want to make it as a string value here right because i want to return back the string so the return type is nothing but string so let's say i would say f1 is equal to if i pass employee object then i have to do what this operation what are i do here i want to do this right so what i can do here for the f1 operation for the f1 function if you see here for the f1 uh, function you have to do the same logic isn't it so i would say within the same for loop within the same for loop let me do this In the same for loop instead of writing like this what you can do you can create a function isn't it within this function you can pass that value e because that is the first object right what are you getting it if you pass the value e you are going to do what if e dot employee dot starts with k then do this otherwise do this isn't it isn't it so what you can do you can do the same thing here and then finally you can end with semicolon that's all now why it is doing error lambda expression parameter e cannot re declare another local variable defined in closing scope okay e is already defined here right so i can say it something called um r okay now i'm making it as r and then r dot start to start okay now let me see what is error showing lambda expression r cannot re declare another local variable defined in closing scope okay lambda expression parameter r cannot re declare another local variable defined in closing scope okay so which means okay i got it so what is what does it mean is whenever you pass the value let's say e or whatever the object you are passing it right whenever you pass this one so what you have to do here is instead of putting here actually you have to call that method actually this function has to be defined outside of this one i know what is the error okay you have to do this basically by you know you have to call f1 dot apply of here you have to pass the value r which means for every object you are retrieving here right you are calling this f1s apply method of r whatever you are passing r it will become here and then you are checking it this method ret must return the type of string yes because you are you are saying that it has to return string right so what you have to do here when you do this one if it goes inside is right inside if it has to return the data which is something but started with k isn't it now let's say if it goes to l spot here also it has to return the data so that like it will return st string you see here no more errors you are getting it right so this is how you can remodify with your lambda expression 
and also whenever i say f1 dot apply you have to put it in the sys out otherwise you won't be able to see it right so let me put it in the let me write it into the system dot out dot println and then f1 dot apply of first object called employee object e or r let me run this you see here started with k not started with k not started with k isn't it so you see here how quickly you can write it with the help of lambda isn't it so this is the beauty of writing a lambda expression wherever you think like you have can have uh, you want to apply some logic and uh, you want to get back the data back if that is a requirement then you can happily go for function interface so function is another predefined function interface given by oracle team okay nitya is it clear for you now this one yeah yes perfect okay now let's move on to the last topic um yeah this is another example i have shown here uh let's say you pass some value and you want to add something that is also possible and also if you pass some string value and you are expecting that string has to be concatenated with some other string then your input is parameter is of input type is string and output type is also string right so that is why you have to give two values since the function is accepting in, in, uh, input and also it is producing output so it always expects two parameters here which means what is the input data type what is the output data type so if you pass string here then you have to pass here string apply means like you have to give string so that like whenever the string is passed to the value s and it has be can concatenated and given back as string okay now let's move on to the last topic for today which is nothing but a function chaining okay so function chaining is a uh, just a concept it's not related to anything about uh, uh new but uh, it is kind of same as like method chaining but i want to tell you what is method chaining first okay method chaining okay from the name you can see chaining means what next 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 right you are you are actually uh, adding it right which is nothing but like the practice of calling different methods in a single line so let's say i want to give you the example by going by writing a simple program let's say i create a class called function chaining demo okay so let's assume that this is a stand alone uh, java class okay it is called some demo so here here you think about like you can have one class called uh, let's me take this as uh, the same example like functional demo okay and in this one i would say that you know uh, i can have uh, multiple uh, you know um, uh, parameters i can set let's say i can say just a demo this is just a simple class right but that is a main class right so here i have a string uh, i can have a variable called string let's say demo name something like that okay so what you can do here you can create a constructor right default constructor or you can use it uh, how you can get it easy way to get it generated from the eclipse right um using fields you can generate it isn't it now you see here yeah now let's say also i want to create one more method just to set some value okay so which means public void set the more name what i should do i have to pass some value right let's say string n whatever i am getting it here i am going to say this dot demo name is equal to name n isn't it so whenever i call this set method set demo name if i pass some literal string value then that will be assigned to the demo here for that object isn't it so this is one piece let's say i want to say something called public void print method okay i will tell you why i'm doing all this let's say simply i'm doing here a system router printer i am printing and you can say that so this dot the morning okay so what i do, what i'm doing here is that let's say uh, i am having a class where i am having one variable called string demo name and i have a, a constructor to call this constructor this class with a name passing as a parameter 
and then assign to the local variable right and then here you see here i am having another method called set demo name where i can pass this and also i can set it to here so whenever you see here whenever you see here in this set method let's say you are you are getting a, a string value here right but after this let's say you want to uh, give back the same object itself how you can do you can do that return this what does it mean return this means you are expecting demo uh, object has to be written here not a void do you agree on this right this is nothing but the current object current class object right so where is this code is written line number 24 inside this class demo so demo object has been written back whenever someone calls this one and also at the same time you will see this value n has been assigned to this particular this one isn't it so it's up to us whether you want to have uh, you want to do something inside the constructor or not but just for uh, demo purpose i am just saying that it's not required but if you want you can have it okay whatever you want write it you can write it. so here i have a simple class where i have a method uh, sorry variable and then i have a method to set the value of this one and while after uh, setting the value it is returning this means like current object and then i am having some print method okay so if i want to call this method let's say demo d is equal to new demo of right maybe if you want to say very clearly i can simply say demo of is it i can simply say that demo of inside that i can simply say sys out inside the sector okay so here i am saying whenever i call demo d equal to new demo of what it will do it will call this one and you will be seeing this right line of code isn't it now i am going to say d dot d dot let's say i want to call this method c d dot set demo name and here i am passing this demo name i can simply say java course java course and what is it returning if you click on here and if you do here right you will see what is the method returning this set method is returning what object of demo class because if you see return this means the return type is demo isn't it so you already having a demo object on the demo object you can still able to call print method isn't it so instead of first calling this one and then storing into one variable and then again on that variable if you call let's say dot print that is also possible but if you can do in this way it is like very uh, let us style of creating uh, writing a code in java 1.8 okay if you say dot print of so it will automatically print this one let me go and run this you see here inside the constructor and i am printing java course how this demo name is having a java course because when you call the set method you are giving us java course let's say i am saying aws course see inside the constructor i am printing aws course so which means you can able to concatenate or you can uh, have a chain of all the methods that you can write in a single line as i said here the practice of calling different methods in a single line is nothing but a method chaining the practice of calling different methods here what you do first you are calling this method right set demo name and uh, also you are calling print method so you are calling two methods in the same line okay let's get regroup then uh, we will join back nithya thank you thanks nithya for joining back let's get uh, resume the remaining concept so so far we have seen about method chaining right why do i how, why do i call it as a method chaining this is called method chaining because i am calling two methods in the same line this is possible in java this is called because i am calling calling two methods the same line line of code right so it's not about two methods you can call n number of methods because whatever the output of this method is going to be the input to this particular method so here the output of this method is set demo name of this one is what object of this class because of this object you can again again call another method on the same class right so which is nothing but print and you see here you are getting the demo name 
the variable is set to whatever you pass here so which means it is on the same object you are able to get it so how we can call about uh, function chaining is same like method chaining now let's talk about functional chaining okay function chaining means same like method chaining you can have more than one function or you can have n number of functions in your class whenever i say function it is a predefined function interface right so we have seen how to create function uh, implementation now we are going to see let's say if i have two functions i want to do function chaining which means let's say i create a function f1 is equal to let's say if i pass the value i and i want to get let's say i plus 20 or i can say i plus 2 if i pass the value 2 sorry if i pass the value i i want to get i plus 2 okay let me import it okay let me put it this way why i am getting error i have to give what is input and output right because it is a function so function doesn't know whether it's a input and output parameter so i have to give say that okay i am giving input as integer data type and output is also i am expecting as integer because whatever is the value i give it will be added with 2 and i will get back similarly let's say i am giving another function let's say this is f2 in this one i am saying i plus instead of i plus i can simply say i into 2 if i pass the value i i want to make it to multiplication with 2 so let's say these there are two functions i have so similarly how i defined here there are two methods right one method is this one other method here inside the class similarly i am creating two functions because i want to prove the function chaining now i want to say that whenever i want to have two functions if you want to combine it if you want to do it there are two ways that you can do one is f1 dot there is a there is a method called and then you see here and then if you simply say apply of let's say i will show you first this one if i say simply f1 dot apply of let's say 5 what will happen apply method will apply this logic of 5 into this i and whenever i pass i it will be added with 2 isn't it so the output will be 7 let me see this okay i need to put it in the sys out so now the output should be 7 right let me see it here you go yeah output is 7 let's say if i want to apply for the function 2 where my logic is i want to multiplication with 2 right let's say if i say f2 dot apply of 5 what will be the answer 5 into 2 10 here you go right so which means it is applying the function directly so instead of doing this one and then get the store the value in one variable and then uh, do that what you can do you can do in a single line so first one is f1 dot if you want to let me show you the side first there are two ways that you can do let me explain this one okay so here you go so f1 dot and then then f2 then dot apply means what happens whatever the value you are passing here the apply method that will be taken to the first function and then that output will be applied to the second function so you are actually chaining two functions right you already have one function then you have another function called f2 and you want to apply first of all this value to the function 1 and what are the output of this function 1 because always function will give you the output right so that function output if you want to apply to the another function then you can say that and then the other way of doing is there is a method called compose what it will do is let's say you have two functions you want to apply let's say 5 and you want to first put it in this first function like f2 and this output has to be applied to this one then you can go for compose okay just remember this diagram so you will be able to realize it okay understand it so let me go here so when i say f1 dot and then right so here i would say f2 right and then dot apply let's say here i am saying 10 just to give you the difference and also i would say that some sys out statement where i will simply do some separation so you will see the better output okay so what happens here 
first i will print it okay so what will happen here is so this 10 will be applied to the function first function f1 so what will happen 10 will be applied means 10 is passed as a parameter to this function f1 so if i pass the value i i am going to add with 2 which means if i pass the value 10 here then this will be added as what 10 will be added to the function f1 and that will be converted into the value of i will be 12 now and then it is going to apply f2 which means for f2 the output of f1 will be the input so here the total is the output of f1 isn't it so this 12 will be an uh, input to the f2 so whenever i pass 12 here or i if i pass i the output will be i have to multiply by 2 so here i am passing 12 which means i need to do 12 into 2 which is nothing but 24 let me go and run this program i am expecting 24 here you see you see here right let me go to the other way of doing it in says a sort statement i am going to say first f1 dot compose first i want to apply to the function f2 and then f1 so what i can do i have to go for compose method then dot apply of let me say that i can take 3 okay so here what happens you are calling apply method with the value 3 right so first it is since it is compose first it will apply the value 3 to the function f2 since the f2 is receiving it as i whatever you get it as i it will simply multiply by 2 first so what happens here you are passing 3 right so 3 will be applied to the function f2 then 3 into 2 6 so then this 6 is the input to the function f1 so if you do by 6 right sorry 6 yeah 6 here what will do 6 plus 2 because whatever the value you pass to the function f1 it will simply add to it so then output should be 8 let me go and run the program here you go isn't it so this is the difference between how you can sign your functions okay whenever you have function uh, since that function is always returning an output so that output if you want to have uh, need to be uh, input to the another function then you can always go by adding all clubbing together all the functions into one line itself you can have n number of functions okay you can sign it that's all it's about our design how you want to do it so otherwise what do you do you will do let's say like f1 dot apply f5 okay you got the answer you will store it in an integer let's say some other variable and then you will say f2 dot apply of that variable it will be the same right so instead of doing this way you can able to make it like you know in the one line same line of code you can do it it is all about java 1.8 is morely concentrated on how uh, concisely you can write a code so that it increase the code reusability as well as maintainability and if someone looks into your code you should be able to easily understand so instead of writing like, like hundreds of lines of code you can make it to like two three three, three lines it is possible in java especially with 1.8 especially with respect to lambda and function interface um, i can see that like a lot of things has been changed so basically this will be really helpful the challenge for the developers are like if they go to a project if someone will write the logic with 1.8 and if we don't know how to understand that 1.8 then it will be difficult to understand the logic of the program so that is the reason like 1.8 is a major role or uh, like major uh, turning point in java where each and every java developer should know in and out of 1.8 okay so we targeted for these three concepts today and we have completed so tomorrow we are going to target for the remaining uh, three different function interfaces with you where we are going to learn about consumer and supplier then that's all for tomorrow wherein like we will complete this one and there is one other video you have already made it where you will watch about like comparison table like we have seen like all the predefined function interface right so we there is a comparison table i have made it where you will see when we have to go to use which predefined function interface okay that will give you a overall idea about it and then we will go by remaining topics wherein like it will be more fun and interesting okay so any questions with you so far no Karthik. okay here i apply like five and five the outputs are different the reason is that like based on whether you're using under then or compose okay 
So I would strongly recommend you to go through this uh, video and also I'm uploading every day the recorded videos. You can go and watch it in the YouTube as well. And also uh, please go through the same like the assignments as well. Because tomorrow there is no assignment. But if you already did this one, that will be great. Okay. So tomorrow we'll yeah. catch kind of... Okay, Nitya. Thanks for your time. We'll talk tomorrow then. Bye. Take care. Bye, Kathy. Bye.